Hey there friends, what's up? It's Melanie with Lost and Found. Welcome back to our YouTube channel where today I am making over this thrift store nightstand. This is a $20 nightstand. It's got great bones, nice and solid and sturdy, but you can tell it's got that kind of reddish old dated cherry finish, dated hardware. I don't know. We're not in love with it like it is right now, but with a little bit of elbow grease and some paint, we're going to give it a completely new look. So I'm gonna walk through the process in the video, sharing with you the products that I use, the steps that we're gonna take. I hope you'll follow along with this so you could learn how to transform a piece like this yourself. Maybe you got this nightstand sitting in your own house and you're wondering what in the world can you do with it, okay? I'm gonna show you today. First step, of course, was to take off the hardware. Easy peasy, not a tough job. And then the next step was to clean it with my Fusion Mineral Paint TSP degreaser. This is the cleaner that I always, always use. It's a really, really mild biodegradable degreaser. And it's highly concentrated. You just mix up two capfuls into a spray bottle of water, spray down your furniture, and then wipe it off with a rag and then it doesn't leave any residue. You don't have to wipe it off again, but it gets off grease and grime and hand oils and just gets your piece ready to paint. The color I picked was Legacy by Jolie Home Chalk Paint. This is one of the lines of paint that I have in my online store. And because I was using our Jolie, I did not have to do any other prep work besides the cleaning. So nope, no sanding at all. You can just start painting. Now one tip, if you do skip your sanding on this first coat, it's helpful to keep it really thin. Kind of use it like a priming coat. So I'm not trying to get full coverage, just getting a base coat on here. And if you can get that thin first coat on and then let it dry a little bit longer than your other coats are gonna to take to dry, I, I let it set and dry overnight. It helps to kind of grip the surface. Now, when you're working with Jolie, each coat is dry in about 30 minutes. So I could have moved quicker if I wanted to, but because this piece was pretty glossy, I let this first coat dry overnight and that helps just give it a little bit of grip. All right, so the next day, first coat dry, time for the second coat, and that second coat for sure did the trick. One of the things that I really like about this paint is that you don't have to use a super fancy brush and you don't have to worry about paint drying out too quick on you. I really work it over with the brush and just to smooth it out. And then honestly, you guys, I think the finish is so nice and smooth. I think it's just a paint that you can be a little bit sloppy with um, and just really keep working it with that brush and it just smooths out so nicely. Okay, we are done with the second coat on this little nightstand in the Jolie Legacy. It looks great, I'm really happy with the smoothness of it. I am going to very, very lightly distress it just along some of the edges and go over the whole piece with this really fine 400 grit sandpaper. And that's just to give it a super, super smooth finish so it feels buttery smooth to the touch.
questions I get a lot at this point when I start talking about finish sanding is people say, Melanie, now it's all hazy. The finish is chalky and dusty and hazy. And yes, that happens when you finish sand. You're gonna notice it more on your darker colors than you are on your lighter colors. With um, lighter colors, like a wipe with a damp cloth takes care of it. Darker colors, wiping on a little bit of an oil-based top coat, a wax, a little bit of hemp oil, anything like that takes care of it. And so once we get our wax on this piece of furniture, you're not gonna see this haziness. And the payoff is going to be the absolutely smoothest feeling furniture you've ever felt. It feels factory finished smooth. And it's going to feel, especially if you're selling your pieces, someone's gonna walk in and feel it and not gonna be able to resist touching it and wanting it in their home, I promise you that. I use the Jolie Clear Finishing Wax to seal the piece. This wax is a harder paste wax, so uh, it takes a little bit more elbow grease to brush it on, but it really cures up for a nice hard finish. And because it is a paste wax instead of a cream-based wax, if I needed to come back and paint over this wax later with more Jolie, I could totally do that. If I was using a creamy or softer wax, then I wouldn't be able to do that. So that's one of the things that I like about this wax. But just kind of work in sections and then I use these blue shop towels to wipe off your excess wax. Nine times out of 10, when people are having issues with wax, it's because they just have way too much on there. So your paint turns a little bit darker as you're applying it, which, you know, is kind of nice because then you can tell where you're working it. But then it dries back to that lighter color. But you just, again, work in sections and then keep some of those shop towels handy and just buff off all of your excess. Don't let it sit and dry on there because then it's going to be really hard to get your excess off. So it, it doesn't take a lot. It takes probably less than you think that it takes. Once I worked my way and waxed the whole piece of furniture, then I was done. So here it is with the new hardware that I just screwed in right over the old hardware holes. So easy peasy. And I love the new look. It's so much more modern than that cherry finish. The finish is nice and smooth. It feels soft. It's just a great little piece now. So if you guys enjoyed this makeover, you found it helpful, please give this video a thumbs up and please subscribe to my channel. We've got lots more painting videos, in fact, a whole playlist of painting videos if you wanna check those out.